Okay, so we've got uh, Bigad for a, another adult pathology viva, uh, a very important one for the FRCS exam. Uh, are you ready, Bigad? Uh, yes, indeed. So you've got the 76-year-old lady who's coming to your hip clinic. She's had this hip replacement only a year ago, and she's coming with hip pain. Um, have a look at the x-ray. Tell me what you're thinking and how you would proceed to manage this patient. Okay, so this is a plain um, uh, radiograph uh, of the right hip anterior posterior view. Um, of this lady, which shows uh, loosening in all the grooving zones around the femoral stem, um, as well as in zone one around the establer socket. Uh, given the recent history of a total hip replacement, I am worried about uh, septic loosening. I would like to ask more about the index procedure, where it was performed, um, the post-operative period, whether it was uneventful or there were any complications, and how those were dealt with, uh, whether the patient was satisfied with the hip replacement initial to start with, um, I would also like to ask about any general manifestations of infection, including fever, headache, malaise, or anorexia, any local signs um, of infection like redness, hotness, and tenderness around the wound, any wound discharge, and any previous treatment after the, uh, the hip replacement. Yes, so that's very good. So she, does, she did have a, a vague history of having some wound problems, uh, nothing uh, um, that stood out, and she did admit taking some pills uh, from the GP for a few days. Uh, so that uh, makes me more worried about um, septic loosening. I will immediately send away uh, some blood tests while she's in clinic, including a full blood count, um, an ESR and a CRP. I'm aware that ESR and CRP are not really specific and sensitive, but CRP is better than ESR in terms of sensitivity and specificity, where it could reach up to 90 to 95%. There is also in my institute the interleukin-6 test that's being done as one of the diagnostic tools. Um, the leukocyte esterase reagent and synovial sure, which is the synovial alpha-1 defensine, which has better specificity as compared to ESR and CRP. Um, I will also discuss with the patient um, aspiration of her joint, um, uh, which is best to be done in sterile conditions in theaters, and sending off some, uh, uh, some, some of the samples for culture sensitivity for a gram stain, and to perform the synovial sure on that, which has a sensitivity up to 99%. Um, if all the tests come back, um, that it's an inf infected case, I would consider doing a revision of your hip. Okay, so the tests are back as positive as you uh, suspected for staph aureus. And uh, tell me what you're thinking of in terms of uh, management. This is a complex situation um, um, that's best I would discuss with my consultants. I'll discuss with the microbiology team in our uh, hospital. This is a multidisciplinary approach. I would like their guidance on, anti uh, on the antibiotics that we will need to use, uh, but we will offer her a two-stage revision of her hip replacement. This is the protocol used in our institute, um, uh, which involves removal of this hip, uh, a period uh, inserting a cement spacer, an articulating cement spacer, giving her IV antibiotics for six weeks. Uh, probably she will take it at home, so she needs a pick line. Um, and then guided by the results of the repeat test, ESR, CRP, um, um, full blood count, and uh, a negative aspirate, we plan the second stage, which is usually six weeks down the line. Um, I am aware that there are some centers worldwide that are uh, advocating single state uh, revision uh, for low virulent infections, for those with um, uh, severe comorbidities who cannot withstand two, two procedures, and uh, uh, those who have a very good uh, local tissues. Um, the results are uh, initially, um, uh, I mean, they're reporting very good successful results, but this, are, this is in the hands of experts from uh, specific centers. Uh, yet the two-stage division worldwide remains the gold standard of management of infected uh, periprosthetic joint infection. Okay, and um, just just to uh, you know dig deeper, do you are you aware of anything now ongoing in the UK that might be trying to answer this? Uh, 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 yes, in fact, um, there has there hasn't been any randomized control trials comparing single stage with two stage, and there is the informed trial uh, being done in the UK, which should answer this question. Um, uh, this is the first randomized control trial being done to compare a single stage and a two stage revision for total hip replacement surgeries. Um, um, I'm aware, though, that the Norwegian Joint Registry reports 94% success rates for two-stage interventions. Yes, I totally agree. And I think for now, uh, uh, this still remains the procedure of choice. And uh, I totally agree with your uh, judgment. Um, now, if we go back, how would you prevent this from happening in the first place? 
Um, I would follow our hospital's protocols, um, um, which includes the preoperative measures, intraoperative and postoperative. Preoperatively, it includes proper preoperative assessment, optimization of the patient, um, um, uh, optimization of the blood glucose levels and sugar levels, uh, intraoperatively, yeah, limiting traffic. Yeah. Okay. Well, well done. You did really well. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think if um, if I managed to finish more on time, I could have had uh, uh, more time to discuss uh, the prevention thoroughly. Um, on the on the good side, um, I think we've covered most of the investigations, the workup, and uh, the management, which, no, is, think, uh, which is quite tight to do in five minutes. No, I think you did really good, and I, and you you just flew through it, which is what you need to do in these sort of vivas, because these are the straightforward vivas that you should go into the exam and have them already prepared and rehearsed in your mind. Uh, so you flew through it, you knew exactly what to say in the history, exactly what to say in the examination, so you didn't waste time. You did that bit in around 30 to 40 seconds, which is uh, ideal, really. And then you went to the investigations, you gave them what you, you mentioned all the investigations, including the sensitivity and specificity without even being prompted to do so. So, uh, and I think you finished that around, it was two and a half minutes when, when you reached that point. And then you spent another two minutes on the treatment, which is excellent. You even mentioned the papers and then you basically had some extra time. So that's why he then started asking you about uh, how you would prevent this. And clearly, you know, anyone who knows how to, uh, do, uh, all this ev level of evidence would be, would easily know how to uh, talk about prevention of peripathetic joint infection. So that was just probably a time filler rather than an actual question. So I think well done. What do you think, Ahmed? Yeah, I, I think I think you did really well, but to be more objective, if we sort of break it into uh, sections, so your comment part on the exercise was really good. You uh, mentioned the zones without being prompted, uh, and you identified the loosening straight ahead, and you didn't spend much time in, in, in that. And then moving on to the uh, history, a uh, very relevant, uh, brief, concise, relevant history, which is very good. You, you didn't elaborate much and lose time on unnecessary details. Uh, and moving to the workup, very good, um, with all, all this, the numbers for the sensitivity and specificity and the treatment. Well, obviously, the, the main thing of the treatment is to compare the two, um, the two stage for the one, with the one stage. And you knew your evidence, you knew you were aware of the trial which is happening in the UK. Uh, yeah, and I agree with Walid, you, you would not have much time to, to, um, to talk about the prevention in details, but it would be taken for granted that at that stage you probably know how to prevent an infection, which is sort of more basic to what you've, uh, you've said. So yeah, I think it went really well. Yeah, I think well done. So if we um, just look at some things. Um, so we didn't get time to discuss this in your Viva. Uh, it is a bit advanced. This is another thing if you're aiming for, for a seven or an eight. And this criteria was set by the uh, International Consensus Meeting in 2018, uh, major and minor criteria. I think have a look at it uh, for the exam. Um, this is some evidence regarding one stage and two stage. There's plenty of papers out there, but generally speaking, there are reports of success in one stage to up to 94%. There has been no RCT yet of one stage versus two stage. The ongoing one is the INFORM trial. And in terms of prevention, there are several factors that you could mention, preoperative, postoperative, and intraoperative. Uh, I think they're pretty straightforward. Uh, just have a read from them. It will be an uh, easy Viva uh, question, but to make it, to give them a stronger impression and show them that you're a seven or an eight, you need to put some evidence behind this. This is the classic uh, MRC trial. It was done in the 80s. Um, it, gave, it showed, um, it, it, and they tested different variables that contribute to peripathetic joint infection. Antibiotic loaded cement was the most important one, followed by the systemic antibiotics. Uh, we'll leave a link for these uh, trials in the video description down below. Thank you. Thank you, Begad, and thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you, guys.